Good day everyone! Welcome to DCBS MNHS English TV. I am Sir Larry and I will help you today with our discussion. In today's episode of Grade 10 English, we are going to discuss first the milk or the most essential learning competency. Critique, a literary selection based on the overall artistic value of its structures and elements, together with the core content or our enabling competencies. First, analyze the structure of a given text. Second, identify the figures of speech used in the poem. And last, point out the literary devices in the poem. In this episode, we are going to have again another way of literary criticism. This time, we're going to focus on formalism or the formalist approach. This refers to critical approaches that analyze, interpret, or evaluate the inherent features of a text. These features include not only grammar and syntax, but also literary devices such as meter and figures of speech. The formalist approach reduces the importance of a text's historical, biographical, and cultural context. Literary devices are tools used by the writers to hint at larger themes, ideas, and meaning in a story or piece of writing. Some of them are as follows. First on the list, simile, or simply the indirect comparison. This means two unrelated objects are being compared to each other with the use of the words like or as. Example, you are as brave as a lion. Second to our list is metaphor or direct comparison. This is a statement in which two objects, often unrelated, are compared to each other. For example, this tree is the god of the forest. Third on the list is imagery. Imagery engages the senses to deepen the reader's comprehension of what is happening and how to feel about it. Example, for imagery that uses the sense of sight, the tree spreads its gigantic sun-flecked shoulders. For sound imagery, the forest was hushed, resounding with the echoes of the tree's stoic silence. For touch imagery, the tree felt smooth as sandstone. For taste imagery, the tree's leaves tasted bitter like unroasted coffee beans. And for smell imagery, the sweet aroma of the freshly baked chocolate chip cookies wafted from the kitchen to the living room. Fourth, we have symbolism. Symbolism uses symbols which can be words, people, marks, locations, or abstract ideas to represent something beyond the literal meaning. Example, a rainbow could symbolize hope and promise. A red rose can mean love and romance. A four-leaf clover sometimes symbolizes good luck or fortune. And a wedding ring can symbolize commitment and matrimony. The last is personification. This means that you are giving human attributes to non-human objects. Example, the car needs a cold shower. In this episode, we are also going to discuss sound devices. These are special tools that poets can use to create certain effects in the poem to convey and reinforce meaning through the sound. Some of them are 
rhyme. It is the matching vowel sounds at the end of words or lines. Example, out of the night that covers me, black as the peak from pole to pole, I think whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Next, we have repetition. This is the repeating of any words, phrases, sentences, or lines within a poem. Example, to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, 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 of the bells, 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 to the rhyming and the chiming of the bells. Third, we also have assonance. This is the repetition of vowel sounds with words. Example, I like to decline an offer of wine to define my style. Next, we also have alliteration. This is the repetition of the consonant sounds at the beginning of words. Example, the shepherd shook his head in negation. And the last, onomatopoeia. This uses words which imitate the natural sounds of things. Example, the sack fell into the river with a splash. Let's move on to the development phase. Read and carefully analyze the poem before doing the different learning tasks. The poem is The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost. This is your learning task one. Read each question and choices carefully. Then, identify the best choice that completes the statement. Write the letter of the best answer on your paper. 1. Based on the information in the poem, what do yellow woods represent? A. Choice B. Older people C. People or letter B. Poets 2. In the first stanza of the poem, how is the word diverged used? A. Headed to the same place. B. Circled around and went backward. C. Went in different directions. D. Continued forward in a straight line. 3. The rhyme scheme in the first stanza is a, A, B, A, A, B B, A, B, B, A, B C, A, B, A, B, B Or letter D, A, B, B, A, A 4. What is the setting of this poem? A. A wood with two roads in it B. A dark forest in the middle of winter. C. A quiet street near a town. Or letter D. The backyard of a house in the country. 5. In line 20, what has made all the difference according to the speaker of the poem? A. The speaker took the road less traveled by. B. The speaker chose a road after looking as far down as it as possible. C. The speaker selected the road that bent in the brushwood. Or letter D. The speaker chose the first of the two roads. 6. You can infer that the tone of the poem is A. Love and determination. B. Confusion and hesitation. C. Happiness and satisfaction. Or letter D. 
weariness and despair. 7. Why the road have wanted wear and been grassy in the second stanza. A. The second road had been taken by only few people. B. The second road had a nice view. C. The second road had been chosen by many people. Or letter D. The second road was near a river that was near the woods. 8. What do you think is the theme of this poem? A. Living life to the fullest. B. Giving up hope. C. Making a choice. Letter D. Having strong determination. 9. I shall be telling this with a sigh. This and this line refer to A. The picture of the first road winding in the undergrowth. B. The plants and grasses that lay near the paths in the yellow woods. C. The residence of the speaker in the vicinity of the yellow woods. Or letter D. The explanation of why the speaker chose the second room. 10. What are the various sounds that are used to emphasize some sections of the poem? A. Alliteration, assonance, rhyme, rhythm. B. Alliteration, assonance, rhyme, onomatopoeia. C. Rhythm, alliteration, assonance, euphony. Or letter D. Cacophony, assonance, rhyme, alliteration. For learning task 2, Robert Frost created the extended metaphor by using diction or word choice. Go over the poem. Take a look at the diction. Use the graphic organizer that follows and list the words or phrases related to travel and road. Stanza 1 has been started for you. In our engagement phase and your learning task 3, based on the poem, answer the questions that follow. Write your answers on your paper. 1. Give the line in the poem which tells that the word diverged means went in different directions. 2. Choose the lines which tell that the speaker wishes that he or she did not have to make a choice between the roads. 3. The speaker claims that he or she has taken the road less traveled by. Is the speaker telling the truth? Support your answer with evidence from the text. 4. What makes the poet decide to take the less traveled road? What does it signify? And last, what does the image of two diverging roads symbolize? In the assimilation phase, let us always remember that, first, formalistic approach refers to critical approaches that analyze, interpret, or evaluate the inherent features of a text. In formalism, Readers do not need detailed contextual knowledge beyond the text. The meaning is inherently conveyed in the text's unique form or structure. Formalism or formalistic approach can be technical as it attempts to be a science of literature with a technical vocabulary. It is also explicate. It emphasizes clarification or close reading of the work itself. And this is also formal. It aims to classify, categorize, and catalog works according to their formal attributes. This is your assessment, our learning task 4. 
Refer to the previous poem as you answer the activity that follows. Write your answers on your paper. 1. Give the rhyming pattern of each stanza. 2. Pick the lines in the poem that use the following sounds. A. Alliteration B. Assonance C. Rhyme 3. Identify the lines which show imagery in the poem. And number 4. Enumerate the elements used in this poem. For your reflection, please complete the following statements. Before we finish this episode, let me share you something. Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. From Joshua 1 verse 9. Until the next episode of Brayton English, I am again Sir Larry. See you all next time. Thank you for watching and happy learning.